What up, team? Here we are with another episode of Kin Stretch with the Fitness Alchemist. We are fighting the urge to just hang out and talk because we haven't seen each other in a while, but we have a job to do, which is to bring you some new material, so on we merrily stumble. Uh, so one update that you're already uh, benefiting from is that we changed mics, which means both of us can talk now. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, Slash, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we're going to be peppering in a little bit more about like kind of what it feels like in the actual position. So hope you dig that. Anyway, today's class is going to be focused around a little bit more intense setup for really getting that front of hip stuff to open up. Um, and this is the result of many hours of experimentation. So I want to just, uh, you know, kind of put a thematic uh, idea over the whole class, which is open yourself to experimenting a little bit and hunting mm -hmm. for your lines of tension. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to bring you close to some uh, juicy spots, but, you know, really take that time to fine tune and figure out what setups work for you. Of course, let us know questions or um, findings as you find them. We'd love to know. Uh, in terms of props today, you're going to just want a, uh, a tall dowel or a chair. Either one will work because during the setup, you're going to want to feel a little bit of support as well as a couch. Um, so that part is actually pretty important because a couch doesn't move when you push on it. So that's key. Um, and it also has some really nice cushioning for uh, kind of the pressure that we're going to put on. Um, uh, yeah, last thing is you are going to be kneeling on your knee a bit, so uh, having a pillow that you can put under your knee would make a big difference um, because you don't want to be focusing on your knee when you're trying to stretch your hip. Uh, and then um, we're going to be leaning up against the wall for some of this work. You don't have to lean against the wall if that's really annoying for you, but kind of a nice uh, substitute for some rotation that you probably already know. Um, you're taking this one. All right, so let's go ahead and start out by placing your back up against the wall. Um, this is where we're going to start with some uh, knee rotation because really this line of tension that we're exploring kind of connects your hip to your knee. So just lean up against the wall, get your back flat up against that wall, and then uh, wrap your hands around one thigh, kind of find a setup that works for you. And from here, keeping your knee at about 90 degree angle, you're just gonna start rotating that shin back and forth. So you can feel the amount of rotation that's available at your knee joint. Available or not. Or not available, yep. And you have a nice view here of what's kind of going on. Um, also with your hands in this position, your hands can actually pick up on the contraction sensation that is working to move that tibia, to move that shin around. Just a few more. Okay, now just pause and hold this position. Now if you, I, I want to invite you to intensify this movement a little bit by making your thigh feel light in your hands or even lifting it up away from your hands and holding this shape in your hip as you continue for just 30 more seconds of this tibial rotation. There we go. Look, Good. mom, no hands. Yeah, exactly. If you want to keep your hands there, that's totally fine. Again, this is just a warm up for your knee rotation. 10 more seconds. And inviting some more active effort through your midsection and your hip crease. Good. And relax that leg down Ooh. to the floor. Take a breath. And we'll move over to the other side. So cradle that other thigh. Once you're there, begin rotating. Good. And after you get a feel for kind of that, what that rotation generally feels like, I really invite you to move all the way into your largest rotation and find a complete stop there. So you're really finding that edge and maybe noticing how as things warm up, that edge changes. You may be able to knock on the door of a little bit more motion. Housekeeping. <laughs> Coming in for some maintenance of the knee joint. All right, final 30 seconds. Invite you to lift that leg up higher or lose the support of your hands. Good. And just a reminder, this is the motion of hip flexion. This is what all those muscles that we're gonna stretch really do when they're short. It's a nice spot to warm up. Good. Hannah's doing an awesome job of keeping the thigh still, but that might take some effort. So tune into that and let that melt down. Very Ooh. nice. Okay, now while you're standing, go ahead, step away from the wall. I'm gonna trade places with you. And you're gonna just set up for a standing version of cat cow. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite ways to sneak this in throughout the day. So just find a nice stable um, stance, feet about shoulder hip width apart and then hands on thighs, 
and really take a moment to make those hands really heavy feeling. The heavier you make your hands, you should first of all feel some feedback on the front of your body, some contraction there, and then also just make sure you actually do feel balanced on your feet and you're not pitched forward on your toes or falling back on your heels, okay? And then once you're sure your hands are pressed heavy, go ahead, we're gonna start this cow-cow from the top. So start pulling your chin into your neck, stretch out that very base of your skull before progressing down your spine, and then really keep your hands pressurized into your thighs as you round through your upper back, finding those stretchies. Good, and once you're moving all the way down your spine and your tail is curled all the way under, just take a moment and breathe there. Breathe into the stretch on your back. Exhale out to crunch out more on the front. Good. And then when you're ready and you're holding that brace, start at your chin again. Start reaching your chin away from your neck. Keep your hands feeling heavy. Start to reach that chin up. Reach those collarbones forward. Stretch your sternum, almost like you're trying to reach your sternum out between your arms and then start fanning those ribs open, fanning your belly open, and finishing by feeling your tailbone really reach up to the ceiling. Another breath in and out here. Stretch the front, contract the back, and one more breath. Chin tucks into your neck. Good. Good. Working to keep those hands pressurized, and that's really just to encourage all the tissues around your spinal column to stay engaged really helps to give it a specific job. Good. Keep working your way down your spine. And on subsequent watches of this class, if you chose to just move back and forth on one segment of your spine that you felt needed a little extra love, that's totally fair game. We love that stuff of making this work uh, specific to your body. Good. Nice, and wrap up the rep that you are on, and then you can kind of melt away that tension and come down to the floor now. A little side lying position for our hip car. Good, and you want to slide maybe this way a little bit more. Which way is this way? This way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. All right, and then from here, find your abrasive choice for your upper body. Um, this first rep is only going to be out 50% after effort, so kind of turn on that medium effort so you can really pay attention to what's going on and start driving your heel behind you. Good. When you max that out, send your shin to the ceiling. Smoothly create that arc up towards your armpit with your knee. And then across and touch your knees together. Good. And then tick-tock it back the other way. Good, good, good. Really trying to scrape out the largest range of motion you can right along the edge of your usable range. Okay, now before you start your second rep, just actively turn things up a little bit. So make that hand heavier, turn your brace on a little more, keep breathing, but around a nice strong midsection and go for it. Drive that heel behind you, reach your shin up to the ceiling. <coughs> Try to really feel out for what is now possible with that higher degree of brace. How does that support your hip car effort? Good. How does that cramp your lat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always fun to feel what parts of your body jump in and volunteer that don't necessarily seem related to the moving part, but of course are because the whole body is a system. All right, now as you finish up this rep, I want you to find that end range hip extension and just hang there for a second. Woo! So really reaching your heel behind you, active butt squeeze, active hamstring, mm. and trying to maximize the stretch you can find across the front of your hip. <sighs> That's what we're gonna train today. And then go ahead and finish up your hip car and relax. Nice one, buddy. All right, let's flip on over and get the other side going on. Nap time? Not quite that yet. Am I gonna kick you? No, you're good. Okay. I will navigate out of the way, okay. <laughs> Okay, so as you set up on this side, again, start with just 50% brace. Good. And then start driving your heel behind you. No. Don't kick your training partner. <laughs> or do. Good. Really good. All the way around, sweeping 
that knee across. And really make sure you reach your knee down to your other knee. So you're, you don't give up once you're working in that um, mid-range. And all the way back and up. Finding out what's going on with your hip today. Mm. Good. Okay. Now, even if you've been doing hip cards for a while, it's always good to check in on what your pelvis is trying to do. So, you know, yeah, hand on pelvis, even hand on your lower back. This is something that continuously surprises me when I'm doing my hip cards, how much my pelvis wants to jump in on that action, even if I don't feel like it is. Okay, so give that a shot. Bracing a little bit more for this second rep. Really trying to send you know, good uh, energy, uh, sending blood to the area, warming things up. Just try to set the scene for some really effective kin stretch coming down the line. Good strength training for your hip. Good. Seeing if you can equal or even exceed the range that you were able to find on that first rep. Give it just a little bit more contraction intensity through your brace. Good stuff finding a spot in hip extension and camping out there just for a few seconds to really maximize the contraction on the back and the stretch on the front and then finally letting it melt away and relax. Okay, so now moving on through our warm up here, uh, we're gonna work just on that SI joint. So this is right where your spine meets your pelvis um, and it can be kind of a hard spot to really train and really feel into. So I wanna spend a little time there. And we're gonna do this from quadruped um, so your hands will be on the floor. If that doesn't feel good, just go ahead and set up your forearms on the couch and that'll set you up pretty even. All right, and then once you're in quadruped, I want you to start by uh, curling your toes under if possible, and then just try to lift your right knee straight up, straight vertically up, and hold it there. When you're there, I want you to just notice on the left side if you have started to lean off to the left, right. So you don't want to fall to the left to lift that right knee. You just want to lift the right kneecap straight up. Go ahead and lower that right side. And then as you lift this left side, really keep that right side of your body still, not letting yourself lean into it. Okay? Now slowly lower that. So keep going back and forth. And I'm just going to show a little um, visual aid here. If I put a dowel right next to Hannah's hip on the non-moving side, she should feel like she's not leaning into that dowel at all. Same thing goes on the other side, that that non-moving part of the pelvis stays put right over that kneecap. Good. Keep going back and forth just a few more seconds, really trying to get a feel for this motion of your thigh bones moving in parallel with each other. And again, this targets the motion happening right at the very base of the spine, where your spine meets your pelvis. At the SI jump. Good. Last rep. Taking your time and spending that effort to find a complete stop. So really feeling out what keeps you from moving further. Okay. And relax that. Shake it out just uh, for a second. And I want to give you a chance to come back and try that again. Offer just a little bit of an intensity boost as well. So when you get back into that position, you can either do exactly what we just did, keep one knee on the ground and lift the other knee, or we're gonna lift both knees and that's what I'm gonna have my buddy do here, okay? So go ahead and get back into quadruped. Mm. <laughs> Trying to prepare, <laughs> okay? And lift those kneecaps off the ground just an inch or so. Now this time, as you lift your right kneecap up, I want you to try to reach your left kneecap toward the floor <gasps> and then find that complete stop and go the other way. Good. Good. Nice. Just 20 seconds more here. And as you go, imagine that there's like a dowel on either side of your pelvis to really emphasize that you're not leaning side to side. You're just driving those thigh bones past each other for five, four, three, two, and one. Wow. Nice job. That's a pretty intense drill. Okay, so now you should, yeah, you should be feeling a little bit of uh, heat building in your body. So now go ahead and just have a seat. You could either sit on the floor or on the couch. And just, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, just a little kneecap low. Okay, so 
this is one of those things that's almost like, it almost seems too obvious to say, but that's how I know that it really needs to be called out, um, which is that our bodies, our nervous system really appreciate touch, even our own touch, okay? That's true. So we're about to do a stretch that puts a lot of pressure on your knees, on your kneecap. So to set us up for success, I wanted to just take a little moment to put your hands on your knee joint and just start by kind of massaging that knee joint. Let sensation be your guide in terms of rub the parts that feel like they could use a little bit of love. Um, that includes parts that you feel maybe a little stuck. Maybe the skin doesn't slide easily. That's actually a really important finding in terms of how healthy the fascia is under there. So spend some time there. Um, maybe there are some spots that would appreciate a little pressure, a little pushing. You don't have to go crazy. We're not trying to break or crack anything. We're just trying to... We're not chiropractors. No. <laughs> We're just loving up our knee joints. Okay? Yeah. All right. And then the only other thing that I want to invite, and you can try this on or not, is just to put your fingers right around your kneecap. All right? And start by wiggling that kneecap up and down a little bit, noticing the freedom of motion there or lack of freedom. If there's some lack of freedom going up or down, that's another finding. That's just something to note. And it might indicate that you could benefit from a little bit more of this knee love time in the future. All right. And then switch your grip. Instead of being on topsies, go thumb on either side and just go side to side. And this one might be a bit stiffer. Yeah. Also kind of weird to feel and to see your kneecap do that. Yeah, some people this really squigs them out. So if that's you and you're just like, you can't handle it, just do a little more knee massage. Yeah. And think about maybe one day moving your kneecap manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead and take some time on the other leg. Oh, good. And this can really change the game, this self-manipulation uh, stuff. Um, if you're someone who's had a lot of pain around your knees, Think about how many memories your brain have uh, created around the knee being a source of pain. So if we want it to be a source of function and, and enjoyment, we got to invite in some pleasurable sensations there. Okay, so that can totally start with just self manipulation, a little rubby rubby. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> HR. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then. Make your way to your kneecap, good. And a little fun trivia about your kneecap and actually also your shoulder blade. Mm. These are both what are called sesamoid joints, which just means it's a bone that's floating in soft tissue and muscle and stuff, uh, which is crazy to think about. But what I love the most is that the sesamoid name literally comes from like a sesame seed, okay? Did really? you know that? Yes. I did not know that. That's where the scientific term came from is like a sesame seed, as in your oh. kneecap is like a sesame seed floating in knee tissue. I mean, I love sesame seeds. I'm so, down. Okay. Okay, so, so after you wiggled it up and down, give it some time moving side to side. No, oh, that's different. Yeah, it might be a little bit different than your other kneecap. Just get curious. This one's clunky. A little clunky. Good. Okay. So now shake it out and we're going to now move into our kind of work position here. Um, and this is where you're going to really get involved with the couch. So there are kind of two options for this couch stretch setup. Um, option one involves putting your knee where you would put your butt. Okay. And then putting your foot on the back of the couch. Now, if that feels best for you, um, you might set up like that and put your dowel or your chair nearby to support your upper body. And this provides a really nice cushion for your uh, kneecap. So this might feel great. In our studio, it doesn't work so good for the back foot. So we're gonna shift down to the floor. And if I'm being honest, this is actually the setup I do at my house on my couch. It just happens to work best for me. So I invite you to try either option. And that's where you put the pillow under your knee? Exactly. The only downside of being on the floor is that your knee is exposed to some real pressure here. So please make sure you um, cushion that kneecap. All right. So the first part of the setup is just to hook your foot on either the seat or the back of the couch. 
and find the amount of knee bend that feels okay to you. I don't want you to max out that knee bend um, by bringing your body all the way back, but I want it to feel like, okay, I'm pulling this tissue on the front of the leg into a little bit of stretch, okay? So, you know, just a little knee bend there. And then keeping your pelvis facing square ahead, try to start curling your tailbone under and it Ooh. should really open up. Okay, now yeah. we're stretching that front. <laughs> That's line. happening. Okay. Now this is the key part. This is such a, a dense area, very tight. Um, it is extremely common to have an emotional response to stretching this area of your body. So uh, definitely don't want to dismiss that. I in fact want to take some time and uh, work on that. Meaning um, your main strategy to uh, relax into this is going to come down to your breath. All right. So as you sit into this stretch, find a, you know, real clear stretch, but it shouldn't feel overwhelming. So adjusting into that. Now begin just breathing deeply in. Nice relaxed inhale and then a long, slow, extended exhale. So really taking the care to make sure that your exhale is much longer than your inhale. And that's the main thing I want you to focus on just for about one minute of stretching time here. If there are any micro adjustments you can make to your setup that help you feel more supportive, more able to settle into this stretch, please take those micro adjustments. And as you settle into your breathing, start playing with sending that breath into the stretch. So as you inhale, breathe into those tight areas. As you exhale, imagine a little bit of the tightness leaving your body. One more inhale, nice and relaxed, and then use that to sort of brace your upper body. You could push the dowel into the ground, you could feel your abs turn on, get ready for a little karate chop, and just make sure your body hasn't moved position. And then we're going to get a little deeper into the stretch by doing a little pales contracting for that back leg. So from here, I want you to begin by kicking your foot into the support, whatever's holding your foot up. Just think about starting to kick that foot. And then keeping that kick going, imagine that your kneecap is super glued to the floor and start pulling the kneecap and the floor forward. So it's almost like you're trying to close the front of your hip, but nothing can move. And go ahead and ramp that up to about 50% effort. It should be just enough to really clearly feel that the stretching area is now working. And we're holding it just long enough to let that work feel significant, feel like something's happening. And now gradually melt away that intensity. All right. Now I'd love it if you could stay in this setup, but if you need a break, please just stand up, pause the video and take a breath. And then we will intensify this stretch a little bit or, or specify this stretch a little bit by just adding some rotation. So now if uh, you're going to turn your pelvis towards that stretching side, this effectively asks for more internal rotation of this stretching hip. All right. And I find it helpful to keep the pelvis kind of back towards the couch as you wind it up. So that lets you really focus on rotation. And then once you feel like, all right, that's as much as rotation as feels possible for my knee and for my hip, then you're going to add as much tension as feels safe by dropping your pelvis away from the couch towards your other leg. Okay, so it kind of feels like you're sending your thigh bone out to the oh. side, but also behind you. Yeah. It hurts so good. Yeah. It okay. doesn't hurt. It just is, it's an interesting sensation. There we go. There we go. Slightly more intense than other stretches, I think. Yeah, for sure. And it's, a, it's that fine line. If when you check in, it really does feel like pain or, or like a, a threatening position, honor that and go ahead and come out of this. Try it again another day. But if it feels like Hannah's expressing like really deep and intense, but kind of like you're able to stay there and work with it, I'd encourage you to try that. Okay. So dropping back into that relaxed breathing, deep and relaxed inhales targeted for the areas that feel tight and then just melting exhales. Okay. 
Good. You notice how Hannah's other arm is propped up on her other thigh. I would guess that's actually pretty important for her to stay relaxed. So keep experimenting. What will help you settle into this stretch? Okay. Now keeping this position, go ahead and pack a little air into your abs and brace. And then this time we're gonna start laying, layering that pales contraction first with rotation. So start by making your ankle feel like it's pushing into the couch um, through the result of trying to rotate your thigh. So it's almost like you're trying to oh. rotate that foot back to hit your other leg, if that makes sense. And then once you clearly feel that, then start adding a little bit more of the knee kick that we were doing at the, in the first round. Oh. Like you're trying to kick down into the couch, laying, layering a little bit more. And then add on to that, feeling like your knee is again super glued and you're trying to bring the floor forward oh. with your knee. And here's where I want you to ramp it up to about 50 or 60% oh. again and hold it for a 20 second hold. Oh. Bracing, holding. Good. Less than 10 seconds to go. Keep that steady 50 to 60% effort. And now slowly melt away your effort. And just stay here long enough that you feel, okay, now I'm back to 0% effort. I'm feeling that stretching area. And then go ahead, come out of the position. Oh. Take your time in coming up to standing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Standing. Standing. Okay. Or, or seated. Whatever sure. you need. Just take Whatever a moment. Whatever you want. Well, it's totally fine. It's a good thing I have this down. Oh my lord. Okay. Yeah. So introducing ah. some majorly oh. maybe new areas. Oh. Let's switch positions here. Sure. Um, and oh. we will come back to that side for a little bit of strength work in a second. But I clearly wanted to give a little little break moment. Feel the difference between sides? This leg feels like two inches longer, especially on the like lateral mm. flow of like anterior hip thigh tissue. Mm, okay. It's crazy. Take feels those good. notes, whatever you find. Let's set up on the other side. So your other foot's now gonna be supported. And this is where you have to try to forget what you went through on the first side. So you can convince yourself <laughs> yeah. to do it again. We want those upgrades on both legs. <sighs> okay, so again, we're gonna start with the pelvis square ahead. So the foot is just behind you. And you know, you might find that the only way this really works for you is to have your foot way, uh, you know, have your knee way open and that's fine too. Okay, so just find your knee placement that will work. I just want to say something that I realized is nice. I have the wall over here so I can like rest my other arm on a surface. So mm -hmm. it might be cool to like be near something, you can be near the arm of your couch or something like that, to just have like options. Yeah, yeah, such a good point. Okay, so once you um, have set up here, go ahead and add as much tension as feels safe by curling your tailbone under and using that to hunt for your line of tension. Okay, and then settle into your deep breathing. If you're someone who really appreciates a count, easy count is in for three, out for seven. That means that your exhale will be about twice as long as your inhale. If I did the math right. <laughs> Sorry. More than twice, but yes. Cool. All right, and just a quick anatomy check in here in the sense that when we talk about hip flexors, we're talking about the muscles on the front of your thigh, but also the front of your hip crease, and even uh, tissues that are deep to your digestive guts that are really deep inside your body and travel kind of behind your belly button mm -hmm. to your spine. So we're talking about some of the deepest tissues in your body. Um, and again, there, there can be some majorly sort of emotionally charged, um, you know, stored uh, tension in these areas. So that sort of um, expertise is beyond my pay grade, but just something I've noticed with working with people. Okay, so take another breath in, embrace your abs here to really hold on to this position. And then we're just inviting a little bit of pails to help you get deeper into the stretch, starting by trying to kick your foot into the couch. So that's a knee action. You're trying to straighten your knee. And then add to that also the feeling of your kneecap being super glued to the floor and pulling that floor forward. Good. 
and ramp up the intensity of that work enough that you feel you need to brace through your upper body in order to contract that leg tissue to 50 or 60 percent. Okay. Good. Just holding it. Make sure you don't spend a maximum effort here. You don't want to burn out. We're just trying to teach these tissues that this is a safe and strong position. And then go ahead and melt away that effort. And as you settle back into the stretch, you might find, oh, there's a little bit more freedom here. Okay? So we could potentially drive the hips forward more, but we're not going to do that. We're going to, again, rotate. So keep your foot planted and just rotate your thigh, turning your pelvis, your belt buckle, and walking that other leg over. And find the amount of rotation that your knee is happy with and your pelvis is happy with. Okay? Yeah. All right, and then once you're happy with the amount of rotation you have, go ahead and let your pelvis drop uh, away from the couch and sort of to the side. Again, this is one that uh, every person is going to be different and really comes down to micro adjusting and hunting. The, the clearest that I can be is you're looking for a stretch that has something to do with connecting these two points, the point on the side of your pelvis and the point on the inside of your knee. If you can hunt around for lines of tension between those points, that's what we're looking for. And it's not as if it's one muscle, it's actually many muscles that play into that. Many layers. Layers of muscle. You will. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ooh. Settling in, finding a way to support yourself so that you can actually let this tissue relax. Good. Breathing deeply, just a few more deep breath cycles, encouraging your body to chillax. Good. On the next inhale, go ahead and pack that air into your abdomen. Feel your upper body turn into a muscly statue. And then begin the pales contracting by pushing your shin against the couch with a rotational effort. So you're like you're trying to rotate or spin that thigh bone, but the couch is in the way. Once you feel that register, add on the feeling of your knee trying to straighten, but the couch again being in the way. And then finally, add the feeling of your kneecap glued to the floor, trying to pull the floor <sighs> forward. And that's the actual action of trying to flex your hip, but the floor and the couch are in the way. Ramp this up to 50 or 60% oh. effort. Hold it here. Again, teaching those tissues that they're strong in this position and asking for a little bit of endurance from them. Five, four, three, two. Keep your position, but just melt away your effort. Settle back in. And then once you feel like your body and nervous system have come back to a calm, then come out of the position. Oh. Great stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it can be a little creaky as you come out of that position. Give yourself a moment. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh. I also just want to normalize the desire to immediately get out of the position when you're done with your pails. I felt that real hard last time. I was like, okay, I'm going to stay in it because they're watching, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a huge, oh. hugely important point. Let's switch back over. Yeah. Um, it's really important to let yourself relax back into that setup. Um, won't get too deep into it today, but just uh, trying to remember that. Okay, so feel your sides, feel how they're a little bit different, a little more open and spacious. Okay, now I want to come back into one more set for each leg, and now we've established the full range of motion. We've really worked our way into that range, so now I want to focus on strength training it a bit more. All right, so set up on your first side. And this time you're immediately going to wind up into rotation. Once you're there, drop your pelvis towards your other leg. Good. And then find that dowel or chair set up for one arm. And then it really, I think it does help to put your other hand on that, that uh, forward leg. Big time slash. Playing around with where this yeah. foot is placed so that it feels like it's giving you some useful pushback from the floor. Mm -hmm. Super helpful. Good. Ooh, there it is. Good. Okay. Once you find the line, yeah, it should feel like, okay, that's a little familiar. We worked on that. 
okay? Mm -hmm. So this time we're gonna do two shorter sets, but a little bit more intense, um, a little more intensity. <laughs> we are gonna do it. Hannah's like, really? Um, and we're also gonna do the rails this time. So not just the pails pressure, but we're also gonna do the other rotation. Joy! Joyful, cramp city, here we come. Okay, so find that stretch, take a couple breaths to settle into it. And just using the stretch sensation to target a line of tension. Mm. All right, now brace your upper body and start targeting that line of tension by trying to rotate your thigh so your foot presses into the couch or your shin presses oh. into the couch. Then layer on that feeling of trying to extend your knee or straighten your knee. The couch is in the way. Layer that on, let that intensify the work. And then finally, add to all of those things the feeling of dragging the floor forward with your super glued kneecap. And then I want you to build this up smoothly, hitting every percentage point through 50%, through 60%, building up 70%, and continue building to your greatest safe feeling effort. Wherever you find that effort, hold it here 10 seconds only. Breathe around a nice, strong brace. Good, resisting the urge to relax. Good. And now finally relax and melt into that stretch. Keep your position. Feeling those tissues relax their tension. Good. Okay, now we're gonna try the rails contraction. So this is pretty different feeling. So just try to send the signal. Brace your upper body. Start feeling the other direction of rotation, like you're trying to lift your ankle away oh. from the couch. Okay, once you feel that, ask for that knee to try to bend a little bit. Okay, and then finally, imagine pushing the floor behind you with your kneecap as you pull your heel to your butt. Good. Another thing I could say is squeeze your butt to increase the stretch you feel on the front of your hip for five. Four, three, two, and melt back into position. Okay, breathe. We're just gonna do that one final time. Pails, rails, one right after the other. This How you doing, buddy? Kneecap needs a break. Kneecap needs a break. This is the precious. Let's do the other side. Okay. So when we're doing this intense work, you know, if it helps to remember that uh, we're really just sending a signal or a communication to our tissues. The stronger the forces are that you're able to play with, the more clear that signal can be. Um, but if it feels too intense, just back it off a little bit and try to give the effort that still sends that signal. Okay? Mm -hmm. So settle into your stretch, winding up rotation here, dropping your pelvis towards your other leg. Good. Targeting that line of tension by falling into a stretch and breathing deeply. All right. And now begin the pales contraction here by thinking rotation first. So thinking of rotating your thigh to press your shin into the edge of the couch. Layer onto that the feeling of kicking your knees straight so your foot presses into the couch. Layer further by trying to drag your, the floor forward with your kneecap. Okay, all of those pieces connect together as you ramp up the intensity of this pales contraction through 50%, through 60%, muscly statue building up to 70% and continuing to add intensity to your greatest safe feeling effort for this setup on this side, on this day. Five, four, three, two, and melt that effort away. Settling back into your stretch, good. Maybe moving into some new space that you feel is available, not forcing anything. All right, and now we turn on that rails contraction. 
So keeping your spine still and braced, think of rotating your thigh the other way, more internal rotation. The result would be, if it could move, to lift your foot away from the couch. Once you feel like that's happening, start asking for some knee bend, like you're trying to bring your heel towards your butt. And then finally, feel like you're trying to push the floor back towards the couch with your kneecap. Oh. Once you feel all those things, link them together to feel like you're squeezing the stuff on the back of your hip to open and stretch the front of your hip further. Find your greatest, safer, safest effort here. Five more seconds, team, you got this. And slowly melt that effort away. All right. Ooh. Very nice. Okay, so take your time coming out of this position. And let's go ahead and seal this up for your body by moving into some capsule cars. Okay, so for this capsule car setup, I'm gonna have you keep holding your dowel if you have it. Um, <laughs> there you go. And uh, stand close enough to a wall or something that you can put your other hand on so you're not worried about balance. And then <clears throat> you're gonna set your, um, your leg into an angle that's maybe just a little bit new for you for hip capsule cars, but uh, one that's pretty effective. So you're gonna bring that uh, working leg up into flexion and then just send it out to the side a little bit. Not all the way out to the side, but just about a like 45 degree angle out. And then tuck that dowel in kind of mid thigh so your foot is free to move just a little bit further that way. Yeah, cool. It's tired. Tired. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and find that and then really try to press your inner thigh against the dowel and we start our capsule rotation here. Oh right. my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then go the other way. Back and forth finding your complete stop and using that dowel pressure to know that the thigh is not falling. Just 15 more seconds, giving the nervous system a chance to utilize that new space that we just created for five, four, three, two, and one. Nice oh, work. So shaky. <laughs> Great work. It's pretty intense Pales Rails to set up. Indeed. Indeed. All right, so go ahead and turn it around. And I would say it's like the least trained part of the hip Big that time. we're targeting in this class. Big so time. if you're feeling extra weak in this class, it's not you, it's us. <laughs> but we're getting some training in for it now. Oh yeah. Here we go. So bring that thigh up in front of you and then a little bit out to the side. Just can open up some more room. Get that dowel placed and go ahead and start rotating. Now if you didn't have a dowel, I'm hoping that this arm is just relaxing or holding onto a chair. Okay, you don't need to set your thigh against anything. Just doing your best to keep your thigh still in space. The dowel is just a little upgrade as a feedback. Good, 10 more seconds. Finding how much you can rotate that hip socket without losing the angle of your thigh. And three, two, one, and relax. Good. One more note on those, I was getting like a little pinching in the top of my hip, so I just moved my leg down a little bit. If you're getting any mm -hmm. like pinchiness in here, just move your position down a little bit and do the rotations a little lower. Yeah, finding that position that allows you to focus on rotation. Okay, I'm gonna give the couch back to Hannah here, <laughs> and we're gonna do the rest of this, uh, most of the rest of this class from sitting on your couch, so that's pretty good. nice. Um, and we're going to switch our focus now to the hamstring stuff on the back of the hip. Um, I just want to bring your attention to the fact that now the front of your hip is being asked to work in a short position. So we just stretched it out. Now it should be a little bit better at working in a short range. So set up on the couch, extend your right leg out, and just give a little knee bend so that you're not locking that knee all the way out. Okay, And then from here, you're going to start uh, leaning your torso forward, trying to keep your spine relatively um, straight with itself, and just rotating at your hip. So your it might feel like your tailbone's going up high behind you, and you're reaching your belly button for your toes. Does that make sense? Yeah, when you said rotating, I was like, am I supposed to twist my uh, leg? No. Rotate the pelvis on the finger. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. What am I looking for? So once you're set up here, you're looking for a line of stretch or tension in the back of your thigh, in your hamstring stuff. Um, but the leg being straight, you might also feel a stretch in your calf, in the back of your knee, 
but you do want to try to uh, kind of adjust until you're really locating that stretch in your hamstring meat. Yeah, so keep searching for that, and I'll just layer in what I'm feeling here. Mm. The more that I lean forward, the more I just feel more of the calf stretch that I feel very easily. So for me, the key to find anything in the back of my thigh is really to think about my pelvis, particularly my tail feathers, and that I'm trying to lift my tail feathers. That little teeny adjustment, which you might not even be able to see, helps me feel more hamstring stretch, even though my torso hasn't moved in space at all. So just variables to play with here. Yeah, super important. I'm glad you called that out. It'll be really different for each uh, kind of body. And realize, you know, we have not just tissue running here, but also like a large nerves. Okay, so if you're feeling some feedback that you have a stop sign, not go any further, that's a good stop sign to uh, listen to. I guess all stop signs are pretty good to listen to. Generally, yes, I'd you say. Want to pay attention to the stop signs. Okay, now once you're there, I want you to just create a little bit of pressure down with your heel. And then once you feel the down, really think about like your heel is super glued to the floor and you're trying to pull the floor towards the couch or towards your butt. All right, that's really uh, the action of your hamstring is to just bend your knee and also extend your hip. We want to try to incorporate both things. And then keeping that little bit of pressure, now I actually do want you to rotate your thigh in one direction, keeping that heel pressure, and then in the other direction, keeping that heel pressure. And this should feel like you're just shining a spotlight on various parts of your hamstring tissue. Mm -hmm. So as you rotate out one way, you might feel more of your outer hamstring. As you rotate inwards, you might feel more of your inner hamstring or inner thigh. Just giving that tissue a chance to wake up. Good. A few more seconds here. This one can feel super good if you have struggled with tight hamstrings or uh, kind of sciatica type symptoms. Being gentle, but this one can really feel great. and let that side melt away. Let's go ahead and find that stretch on that other leg. It feels so nice. Good, 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 good. Okay, so on this side again, a little bend in the knee, and then start to lean your torso forward, right at that hip. Again, specifically targeting that hamstring tissue. Good, good. And one thing I, I always want to normalize is like, People sometimes treat stretching like this thing that everyone knows how to do. Oh, no. But actually stretching is a skill like any other that gets better with practice. Um, and as I hope it's clear in these types of classes, the more specific you can be with what tissue you're actually stretching, the more effective you can be. So let that learning curve be what it is. If you're just getting started, it might take a little while. Also, let your sensations be the primary thing that guides you about making adjustments. I think a lot of times people are like, I'm not feeling it. What do I need to do? External source of knowledge. Mm. But really, like, you have the best source of, under, of knowledge yeah. of like, how to find that stretch. We can throw out suggestions, but it's really about what do you feel? Yeah, yeah, so true. Tons of information there if you're looking for it. Mm. Okay, so from here, start making your heel a little bit heavier. Once you feel that, imagine that you're trying to pull your super glued heel towards the couch. This should feel like a knee action and a hip action. And then keeping that pressure, start your rotation at your hip joint. So this is another hip capsule car, but pretty different from the standing version that we were just doing, right? The knee is of course straightened out, so that changes things. The angle of your hip is different. Tons of options. This Good. leg feels so different than the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really want to make sure you are in fact working at an end range, at a stretch. Um, and one thing to note, if you were feeling a tight pinch on the front of your hip uh, and you couldn't get deep enough to get a stretch, it would be fine to be sitting upright and just creating that heel pressure and that's how you're doing your capsule car. Super, sure. super cool to do that. Cool, just a few more seconds, turning those muscles on, finding how much you can rotate and still maintain that pressure. Good, all right, and then melt it away. 
Okay, now go back to your first side. It should feel a little bit more clear to find your stretch. And I want to invite you to imagine that, um, you know, there are really many, many lines of stretch on the back of your thigh, but let's just generally focus them into three. So sort of inner thigh side, medial side, the very middle of your thigh and the outside of your hamstring tissue, okay? Um, so if you create that little bit of heel pressure and try to locate the middle line of tension first, okay? I want you to use that heel pressure just to find it and then see how much you can intensify that stretch by reaching your belly button towards your toes. Oh. So really thinking tail feathers up and really maxing out that stretch, okay? Now from here, we're gonna invite a little bit of motion by intensifying the pressure down with your heel and use that to start bringing your torso upright. So like you're pushing yourself out of this end range position. Good. Once your shoulders get over your hips, you can pause and shift to thinking about making your heel light. This should turn on the tissue on the front of your hip crease and use that to pull yourself back into the very same stretch that you were just hunting for. Pull, 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 and see if you can't intensify that stretch a little bit more. Oof. Good, keep working even after the movement has stopped. Hold here and shift to a heavy heel, and then use that to push your way out. Good. When your shoulders get over your hips, pause. Shift to thinking heel light and use that light feeling to turn on the stuff on the front of your Ooh. hip crease that would pull you even deeper. Okay. Good. And then heavy heel to push yourself out. Shoulders over hips and pause there. Okay, now from here, very nice. Rotate your thigh internally as much as you can. A little bend in the knees still. And now once you've rotated the thigh, lean that torso forward again and find a stretch more on the inside of the hamstring. Oh yeah. A little different? Right there. Yeah. Just right there. <laughs> yeah. Might be a tight <laughs> spot. Okay. okay. Now once you feel that, you're going to keep the thigh rotated the same the whole time, pressure down with your heel, <sighs> and start driving yourself out of this stretch. Good. And then make sure your thigh stays internally mm -hmm. rotated. Make the leg feel light and pull yourself mm. deeper into that stretch. Mm. Pull that hip crease tighter. Like you're trying to close that angle down okay. and the result is a nice strong stretch. Then when you run out of room, make the heel heavy. Push yourself out. Good. Mm. One more, pull yourself into this position. Active feeling like you're almost trying to lift your foot off the ground. Pull, pull, pull. <sighs> Tail feathers up high in the air. <sighs> Good. When you've maxed it out, make the heel feel heavy and then push yourself out. <sighs> Good, and pause with your shoulders over your hips. <sighs> okay, final one on this side. Go ahead and rotate the thigh clear over to the other direction. And you might have quite a bit of rotation here. You want to find your end range. And then, oh my gosh. Why not? I couldn't see your foot. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, lean forward. Extra rotation is not my Olympic sport. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Find that stretch. Oh yeah. Good. And then once you've maxed out that stretch, keep your position, but make the outside of your heel feel heavy. It might feel weird to do that, but use that to push oh. yourself out. Good. And really resist the urge to just go through the motion here. Really try to tune into these sensations now, making your leg light to pull you into that stretch. So you're trying to access those hip crease tissues. Good. Pull, pull, pull. Find that complete stop. And then heavy foot to push your way out. Push, push, push. Good. Last one. Make it your goal to pull yourself into your deepest, but still safe feeling stretch. Pull, pull, pull. Trying to connect your thigh to your belly and your belly to your thigh. Good, only when you've proven to yourself that you can't 
fold any further, pause and make your heel heavy and drive yourself up and out of it. Okay. Now I want you to just give your back a little break. Just go ahead and come up to standing for a second. Go on a little mini walk around your space and notice how one uh, back of thigh feels pretty different than the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, and again, this can be so uh, game changing for if you've had a lot of um, issues where those hamstrings attach to your pelvis, kind of right in that deep bathigh, what do you call it? Bathigh. Bathigh. Yeah. Clearly a bathigh. Obviously, well, hello. <laughs> okay, so this is a really good one to remember, this kinetic stretching mm -hmm. for your hamstring. Yeah, it's nice. All right, let's do your other side and then we'll uh, wrap and be done. Okay, so sitting up tall, you're gonna focus on that middle part of your hamstring and hunt for a stretch. Lean it forward. Okay, boom, clear, great. Good, once you feel that stretch, start turning on a little effort to try to pull yourself deeper into that stretch. Good, so it feels active on the front of your hip. Yeah, thank you. Good, now make the heel heavy and then start to move to push yourself out of this end range. So you're teaching those tissues that we're stretching how to be strong and, and kind of get you out of that position. When your shoulders are over your hips, pause and find those uh, front of hip tissues that will pull you back into your stretch. Good, working, working, working. If this stuff wants to cramp, just flirt with that cramp. See how far you can pull yourself in the stretch. Then pause, make your heel feel heavy, and use that to drive oh. yourself smoothly out. Oh. Good. And slower is better here, team. Really take your time. Oh. Final one, pull yourself deep into this stretch. Oh. Hannah's doing a great job of really keeping her spine oh. relative with itself, not rounding over. Finding that end range, then heavy heel pressure to drive yourself out. Good. And relax. Almost cramped that one. A little cramp there, okay? Okay. Now once you're sitting up right here, keep that knee bend and just roll your inner thigh inward. Okay? Now if you're someone with some pinching on the front of your hip, this rotated position might mean you can't lean forward anywhere near as much as you were just finding. So. Take that for what it is. And uh, let's uh, start pulling yourself into this stretch on a rotated thigh. Good. As you pull yourself deeper, you're hunting for oh. those stretches Ooh. more on the inner thigh, inner part of your hamstring, and then make that inner part of your heel heavy to drive yourself out. Good. Cramp city? Almost Instacramp, yeah. Instacramp. Okay. Is that like Instagram? Yeah, I was just going to say, okay. in 2021, we're going to start an app called Instagram. Mm. Good. Pull yourself to your end mm. range. Mm. Good. You don't know where it's going to be. You have to feel it out and then make your heel heavy and drive yourself out. Oh. Final one. Pull yourself forward. Don't let gravity do this work for you. Push, push, push mm -hmm. yourself and your intensity, and then drive your heel heavy and drive yourself out of it. Good, and then relax. Woo. Good. Now I'm really hoping your other leg is just doing whatever feels good in terms of finding a position. You might see Hannah's kind of moving it around and that's perfect. Just not part of your focus here. <laughs> Okay, and then roll your thigh bone out as far as it will go. That's it. Okay, now for some of you, you might be able to get your foot almost like all the way over. That's fine, just make sure you're asking for that pressure through the whole side of your foot. Whatever can make contact with the ground, that's what you want to pressurize. Okay, so externally rotated now. Find that stretch by pulling yourself into it. Reaching your belly button out and in front of your foot. Once you clearly feel that stretch along the more lateral part of the hamstring, make your heel heavy. Use that to push yourself out. Good. And then pause with your shoulders over your hips. 
make the leg feel light to pull yourself into that stretch. Oh. Good. Pause, make the heel heavy, and push yourself out of that end range. Okay, final rep. Brace your body and pull yourself into your most intense stretch. Still want it to feel safe, but really find your edge. How far can you go? Not letting your spine round, but really maxing out that stretch. And then shift to making your heel heavy. And take your time here, really strength training that stretching area as you come out of end range. Oh, bueno. Okay. Go ahead, shake it out, come up to standing. And you're gonna grab your dowel one final time. Stay standing and just place uh, your first leg onto that couch. So we have a sort of a similar position. Good, a little bend in the knee. And then you're gonna brace on that dowel really nice and strong. Boom, okay? And start rotating your thigh here. Just uh, kind of rolling it out into external rotation, rolling it in, and just letting the heel rest on the couch. You don't have to push it down into the couch. You'll see why, okay? Now keep going, keep rotating, and as you keep going, start asking for the foot to get lighter and lighter. You don't have to lift it up, just make it feel lighter and lighter, so you feel the whole front of the hip turning on, moving slowly enough that your brain can learn what you're asking it to do. I right, guess what I'm asking it to do. Okay. Play with making that foot maybe a little bit lighter, Yep, trying to smooth out that contraction that you're finding on the front of your hip. And now final 15 seconds, how light can you make the foot? Maybe it gets lighter, maybe you surprise yourself and your foot comes off the support. Either way, keep that smooth rotation going. Good, five, four, three, two, cramp city, and relax. Bueno. Okay, and final side. Very nice. So a little knee bend. Find a bracing strategy that helps you feel supported. And then just start by rotating. The foot is just resting. Good. Very nice. As you keep going, keep rotating, make that heel feel a little bit lighter. So it's a little bit more active on the front of the hip crease. Then go ahead and intensify further for these final 15 seconds. How light can you make that foot? Continue to max out your rotation, but trying to make that heel feel as light as possible, or maybe even hovering off of the couch for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. All right, team, that was a doozy of a class. Great job. Again, let us know any questions, and uh, looking forward to seeing you soon.